Experimental measurements of heat capacity of aluminum at low temperatures is a function of temperature and in chapter 7 uh, we will learn more about this model uh, we have the constants a and b uh, from this data we have to find a formula for the entropy of a mole of aluminum as a function of temperature okay so uh, let us do it uh, we know uh, from the discussion of the chapter the increase in entropy uh, is represented by basically this is coming from the fact that uh, ds the fact that ds is equal to cv dt over t right heat capacity at constant volume uh, we can turn this into an integral right because we can picture this as a uh, sequence of small uh, infinitesimal steps and we can compute uh, the ds of each step and then we can add them up to get the total change in entropy so uh, we know that delta s turns into an integral if we do that uh, which is s final minus s initial which is equal to the integral from t initial to t final of cv over t dt okay and uh, if I plug the numbers in, if I plug the expression for the CV, heat capacity at low temperature at constant volume, I would get a change in S, which is S final uh, minus S at zero has to equal to the integral uh, of CV is AT plus BT cube over the temperature DT and this is going from 0 to T final okay and uh, the reason that I am uh, using this from 0 is because I know what S of 0 is S of 0 is equal to 0 why is that because at 0 temperature uh, the system uh, just achieves its uh, lowest energy state and that lowest energy state is unique so the multiplicity of the lowest energy state is one there's only uh, sorry is one there's only one way that the system can achieve or you can uh, arrange the system in its, in its lowest energy state and s would be k l n the slowest energy state and you would get zero because l n one is zero okay this is often referred to as the third law of thermodynamics <clears throat> right now ideally this is not 100 percent accurate right uh, because in solids it's possible to change the orientations of certain molecules uh, with very little uh, change in energy okay and if there's a little bit of change of energy therefore s does not necessarily have to be zero okay so taking this to be zero at zero we can continue on the problem and we could say this is equal zero and uh, we could integrate this to a dt plus b t squared dt each from 0 to t final and we would get a t final plus b over 3 t final cube and uh, this is a formula for the entropy of a mole of aluminum is a function of temperature now if we need to evaluate it at 
um, 1 Kelvin so if T final is 1 we just plug in 1 so we get we get s of 1 equals uh, we know what the constants a and b are so this would be a times 1 plus b over 3 times 1 cube so s of 1 will equal plugging these in we get a is 0 0.00135 uh, joules per kelvin squared times 1 kelvin uh, plus 1 third uh, b is 2.48 times 10 to the minus 5 joules per Kelvin to the 4 times Kelvin these guys go away this is going to be Kelvin cube because it's T cube and I have 1 Kelvin left so S of 1 will be zero point zero zero one three five eight Kelvin mm, oh, sorry joules per Kelvin and uh, if I need to express this and uh, the question says expressing your answer in joules per Kelvin this is joules per Kelvin in a unit less numbers I could just divide by Boltzmann's constant right uh, and so if I need to turn this unit less I would say this is s divided by k so this would be 0 0.001358 joules per Kelvin divided by k which is 1.381 times 10 to the minus 23 joules per Kelvin that way I could get a dimensionless quantity nine point eight four times ten to the nineteen this is s of one okay likewise for t equal ten I just plug in ten I get ten a we already have a and b so we just plug these in and if we do that we get Two 
177 joules per Kelvin if I need to make this dimensionless I would divide it by Boltzmann's constant that's 1.381 times 10 to the minus 23 this is in joules per Kelvin this is in joules per Kelvin these go away and we get into the 21 dimensionless. That is it. That does it.